Hello everyone and welcome back to another video of mine. This time I'm back with Kali Flame of Samsara season 1 episode 4. I can tell you how excited I am right now. Like we all know, I love to play around and I have the feeling that Saraswati is gonna be a love interest. And I'm actually so excited to see what this episode is gonna be like. Last episode we had that meeting. We were chanting the Tantra and we suddenly were overcome with another wave of pain. And dear little Ram Dubai saw it and we found out that he also has that headache. So I hope that we get some intel on what those headaches are actually about. Maybe that means that we are connected to Ram Dubai. I don't know, but we will see. Fate can be ruthless. I agree. Who is gonna be the one? Episode 4, Voices in the Flames. Oh god. Warning, this episode contains description of violence and death. Okay. Alright. Okay. Alright, and last episode we also found out that Raj, the man that our little friend likes, is together with the daughter of Mrs. Bazoo. Now, let's see. Devi flattened herself against the wall, clenching the cup in her hand so hard it could crack. Why was she worried? Just a minute before she was with Kamal in the kitchen. On top of that, he was also half naked. Who was she to judge Radha and think the worst of her? Legacy? Is that what you were thinking about when you gave me this? Radha... Devi peeked around the corner and saw Radha pointing at her neck. Did he beat her? What? Are those hickeys? Devi almost dropped the cup. They're standing alone in a dark hallway, arguing in half whispers about something. It's quite intimate. And they could have been standing there for a while. Who knows what they were doing? Passion! Devi didn't want to jump to the obvious conclusion. Raj was several years older than Radha, and besides, her family was discussing a possible alliance with the Takuas. They couldn't be, of course. I mean, Sara did tell us that both of them do not want to marry that man. Sara maybe for more obvious reasons, because she does not like men. And Radha because she's like, I want to be free. I don't want to marry someone that I don't love. And Sara also hinted at the fact that she already had a man. So that man could have been rushed to buy. But then what are the heirs of the two most influential families doing here together? Just like Amala and Amrit. Radha smirked arrogantly. She lifted her chin as Raj stepped even closer to her. No woman will match your taste and you know it. You like it spicy, but you are surrounded by sweetness. You will choke on dessert and look hungrily at what will no longer be available to you. <laughs> she said I am the most dangerous fruit of them all. Try to get close to another woman and try to let that woman make you feel the same things I was capable to make you feel. Try it and let's see what happens. Garash grabbed her by her shoulders and whispered urgently. Don't you understand? It will cost us everything. Davy's heart sank when she heard Kamal's footsteps approaching. He must have finished his dinner and was heading to bed. He'll definitely see them and me too. I should hide. Hide. Davy looked around the dark hallway trying to find a good hiding place. There was a sofa and a massive flower in a ceramic pot in the corner. Without thinking too much, she crept up to it. She crouched, hiding behind the green leaves. She was still holding her teacup. Davy took a sip thoughtfully. When I said I hoped it was going to be fun at the mansion, I meant something different. <laughs> she meant something fun and not exciting, apparently. <laughs> She's not connecting those two. Okay. From there, she could see clearly what was happening around the corner. Thanks to the sofa and the plants, lush foliage, no one was going to be able to spot her. I mean, if you're that flat... <laughs> And small, I'm pretty sure you're capable to hide. It's not that Davy wanted to eavesdrop, but if Kamal caught her in the corridor, everyone would find out. All power's in your hands, and soon it will be in mine too. What are you afraid of? It's so early to unite families. The dozen is not ready for it. Do you always think about others before yourself? No. 
Amrit wasn't like that. He always thought about himself and then about others. Radha's face grew grim. She was clearly tired of arguing. Raj cupped her face and pressed his forehead against hers. I know everything, Radha. Sweet girl of my heart. I knew it. She leaned in to kiss him. They're dating in secret? Are you blind? The silence was suddenly interrupted by Kamal. He had walked past Davy without even glancing in her direction. She was perfectly hidden in the darkness. What's going on here? Hearing his voice, Radha panicked and recoiled from Raj covering her mouth. Mr. Rai. Kamal. Their position was too compromising for them to be able to come up with an excuse. There was no need for words. Kamal quickly understood what he stumbled upon. Radha stepped back, pressing her hands to her chest. She just looked like any other confused and scared young woman. Love could humble even the most noble person. A tense silence fell in the hallway. When Raj tried to stand up for Radha, Kamal raised his hand and motioned for him to be quiet. He's like, enough. No need for words. He's seriously telling Dubai to shut up? Although he is certainly in no position to protest. Radha, go back to your bedroom. But don't make me go ask your mother to come escort you. Radha bowed her head obediently and hurried away. She clearly feared her mother like the plague. After a bullshit she pulled when they were reciting the Tantra, I mean, uh, she's on thin eyes with her mother. Davy tried not to move, but her head was still hurting. She took another sip of masala chai and the situation suddenly felt terribly funny. She couldn't have found a better place for a tea party. <laughs> Kamal returned his cold stare to Raj, then he spoke in a deliberately calm voice. Her new family's at the negotiation stage. Mr. Dubai, I'm concerned. As long as I'm not engaged, I can do whatever I want. Do your wants include the unmarried Bazoo Harris? You know what video will rip off you if she finds out. If you also manage to dishonor her. Get to the point, Kamal. What do you want? Kamal crossed his arms over his broad chest. The moonlight fell on his hands and face, so Davy could clearly see his expression from her hiding place. She'd never seen him like that. Cold-blooded self-confident. It almost looked as if he was enjoying the fact that someone else was in trouble. You know what I want. Give your consent. Then everything I say will remain within the walls of this hallway. No one will know what you were doing and with whom. Rash ran his fingers through his thick curls. He was visibly nervous. Path of passion. That's outrageous. Kamal is blackmailing him into getting engaged to Amrita. If he forces Dubai to agree, what kind of marriage will it be? We've made a to think about it. We are due to receive the governor's letter of consent to the engagement any day now. Cross out the names of Amrita and Devia Sharma from the list of candidates. Oh! They won't marry the Claire. Mm. <laughs> something to say about that i don't know <laughs> it's between mr declare and ram dubai it's between these two hotties i'm gonna have to put a poll again y'all why you're crossing the line mr i what if it's the goddess will i think he made clear in the last episode that the goddess can wait i'm not a child and i know perfectly well whose will this choice will follow you should be grateful that I'm haggling instead of exposing you. Wow. Kamal. This man does not care. Honestly, to be quite honest, I am glad that it's not what our character thought. That he's like forcing him to get engaged to Amrita because he knows that she has feelings for him. Make up your mind now, Dubai. On it one day. Kamal glared at him coldly. He was not only taller, but also stronger, and his reputation as a skilled warrior preceded him. Rash didn't dare say anything else. They went to their bedrooms in silence. <laughs> you witnessed an important conversation. Mm -hmm. When her cup emptied out and the footsteps had died away, Davy came out of her hiding place and rushed back to her bedroom. To be quite honest, I would have tried to, like, warn them. When I heard Kamal, I would have been like, Hey, you guys, please leave. Because me as a friend, 
I would try to prevent my friend from experiencing any type of pain, whether it's separation or being threatened to be exposed. The pain that they were in silence and dating behind everyone's back because they just wanted to allow themselves to fall in love themselves and then get married to the people they love. But their duties, because they are part of the most influential families and they're both the heirs, got in the way. So they decided to date in hiding. So that was already enough pressure knowing that this would turn into something more difficult because this kind of is like arranged marriage because they are trying to unite and form alliances between members of the dozen to make the dozen even more powerful like it's normally done when you agree to arranged marriages. Here, they already were suffering enough under the fact that it could turn out to Raj gets engaged to someone he doesn't love and Radha gets engaged to someone that she doesn't love. They would have been each other's side piece, you know? Radha would have been Raj's side piece in his marriage and Raj would have been Radha's side piece. So, like, that was already enough just thinking about that that could turn into reality. So, we could see, based on the conversation that they were having, that Radha said, I'm done with this bullshit. You either decide to be with me or you try to get the love you get from me from someone else. She couldn't deal with it no more. And the fact that Kamal was, like, using the opportunity between these two to like force him to do something that he doesn't want or that he doesn't feel comfortable with is not something I agree with. I would have like tried to tell them, hey, listen, someone is coming your way. Please do whatever this is later. Because we are the same age, we're not older, so there's not this necessity of that forced respect because we have the same age in those older generations or if it's around those royal families there's always like this kind of forced respect towards the elders and because we have the same age it would have been easier like to talk it out of keeping the secret and etc if we would have been the one to find out but she did nothing she just hit okay Mountain residents. They were Malayas two weeks later. The whole estate was buzzing when the long awaited letter with Lord Hertefortia's seal was delivered to Vidya. It was their new governor general's response. He expressed his agreement to a marriage with one of the women Vidya listed in her proposal. According to her, she had described each of the potential brides, their dowry, and their family's position. The governor had studied the list meticulously and narrowed it down to those who could be a good match. Vidya didn't announce who were those still in the running, but ordered everyone to prepare for the general meeting. David was not pleased with the news. As she was finishing her breakfast, she grimaced. The other Harrises seemed to be more excited. No, thank you. He personally chose the names. I wonder who he liked the sound of. It's not about liking. I bet he only looked at the size of the dowry in the family's area of business. <laughs> Sada. You know, this is something I have to say as well. I love people like that. They are so honest, so blunt, that it's already hilarious when you listen to them talk. They have no filter, like even more no filter than I do. And they are not scared to say, yeah, I'm not having this. Love it. Radha was silent. She had mostly kept to herself since the night of the incident. However, she decided to speak up. His future wife will bring him death, no wealth. <laughs> I feel sorry for this bride. When she becomes the governor's wife, her life will be over. She'll be trapped among strangers. Until those strangers are all killed. Oh! Girl! <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> She's hilarious. I love her. Amrita commented on the news as if she were confident that she wasn't going to be on the list. The man of the dozen also reacted to the news much more calmly. After all, they didn't have to sacrifice themselves. Their time for sacrifice would come later when the war was going to start. Devia didn't want to listen to anyone anymore and left the hall. Can we see Ram? 
Just saying. She decided to cut through the yacht to get to her bedroom. Her blood was boiling. She needed to vent her anger somehow. She wanted to put on her favorite clothes and ride Deimos. He was waiting for her in the stables. And not very patiently, according to the servants. But someone quickly caught up with her. It was Saraswati. Devi, wait a moment. Holding the palu of Asari, she came closer. I wanted to suggest we all get together this evening to choose outfits for the meeting. Outfits? Is this meeting exciting to you? I know how you feel about it. Try not to think of it as something terrible. You're not in danger. If Rash agreed to come out's terms, I really have nothing to fear. Amrita and I should have been crossed off the list. But I'm not thinking just about myself. I feel terrible for the other girls. Just say you're coming, or I will come to you. I love her. I love her. She's great. Devi wanted to respond with a rude remark. No, be kind. Be kind. She's cute. She's trying to cheer up the people. She's trying to, like, get everyone together to have a great time. Come on. Appreciate her. Devi wanted to respond with a rude remark, but Saraswati smile clouded her mind and made her melt like butter on a summer day. She's cute. She's trying to cheer her up. I think that she noticed that she wasn't feeling all right and she actually came. It's very rare to find people that do that. They see, they are watching and they are capable to see that you are not feeling well and then they actually have the courage to come and try to cheer you up. That's very rare. One thought kept going through her head. She wanted to share it. Sarah, do you remember our first day here? When we played dice? Yes. You told Radha to flirt with Raj. You chose him for a reason, right? makes you think that it would have been silly to ask Sarah why did you keep silent and not tell her sister Davy knew Sarah was going to share every detail of their conversation with Radha but since they were friends Davy couldn't keep silent about what she'd seen she'd been holding on to that secret for two weeks but she couldn't keep it to herself any longer now she couldn't help but notice Dubai's frequent glances at the Bazoo Harris it was so obvious she was surprised the others didn't know a couple of weeks ago, I caught Radha and Rush together at night, alone. Does anyone else know? No. Saraswati breathed a sigh for a leaf clutching at her chest. That's good. No, it's not good, Saraswati. What will it lead to? This is unacceptable. They should have done a better job of hiding it. This is a scandal! All of these sound stupid. Mm, at this point, they should have done a better job. They should have gone somewhere private, one of the bedrooms at least. But meeting in the corridor at night? Great gods, what were they thinking? To Davia's surprise, Saraswati took her sister's side. Your words are naive. It looks like you aren't grown up quite yet. Is that so? Sara smiled sweetly at her. She gave her a condescending look as if she was touched by Davia's right oseness. Life is much more complicated than a set of rules. Sometimes we have no choice but to break them. But break them in a more smart way, baby. In a more smart way. Like, imagine they would have completely lost their heads in each other's lust. And they would have had sex like there in the hallway. Like, what? Time and place, baby. Time and place. I said it the last episode as well. People need to know time and place. The question is whether you get caught or not. That Adla's only mistake was being seen. I never said that her love is a problem. I said that she should have been more careful where she lets out her desire. Like she's not an animal. She should have been capable to control her urges until the bedroom door. Oh, not meeting with one man when she's about to get engaged to another. So we're not allowed to fall in love now. That. Marriage is a political un union. What did I say before? Do you want to be faithful to just any partner? A stranger? What are the chances of falling in love with someone chosen by your parents? If you strictly follow the rules, you will never know what it's like to kiss someone you love. You'll never be hugged the way you want, the way you need. You'll never be touched the way you like. You'll never know what love feels like. Do you know what it feels like? David never thought she'd ask that, but Sarah replied without hesitation. No. I've never truly loved. I've yearned for someone. I had all sorts of thoughts, but that cannot be called love. It's more like desire. True love. Love is when you fall in love with someone's soul, who a person truly is. With their humor, with their sarcasm, just with the way they are capable to make you feel. That's when you know that you're in love with someone. When you immediately feel at ease as soon as that person is around. 
That's true love. They are your safe place. That's love. It was something completely different. How do you know then if you've never experienced love? You may not really be capable to explain it into words, but you just feel it. That! You just feel it. You know when there's love as soon as you experience it. You feel it. You can't really put it in words. You just feel it. You do anything for someone you love, but not for those you've just been yearning for. Desire! Period. Point it out. Sara slowly ran her delicate fingers over the petals of a wild rose growing near the balcony. She had soft features, almost always lit up with a charming smile, but there was something unique and rebellious in her gray eyes. The way Saraswati looked at her left Davy, no doubt. She really was capable of anything, and Davy didn't want to test the limits of her abilities. It was nice to be Saraswati's bazoo's friend, because you wouldn't have survived as her enemy. <laughs> You wouldn't even have had the time to earn the title as she was capable of taking you out of the game at the slightest disagreement thanks to sophisticated web of manipulation. Damn! According to Amrita, Sara's friendship with Rati Banerjee had gotten off to a rough start at first. She didn't know exactly what caused the rift between them, but she clearly remembered how Rati was mysteriously poisoned. Damn! Only a few days after she called Sara a bitch in the heat of the moment. <laughs> so she wouldn't like me, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, bitch is kind of like my call word. Saraswati hadn't gone to complain to her mother. She had just smiled dryly and walked away. There was no evidence that Sara Bazu was involved. All of her mates were questions. As it was suspected, their mistress had ordered them to put something in Rati's food. Nothing came of it, and the girls later recoiled. No one would be surprised, though, if it turned out that it was Sara's doing after all. Your future husband will surely appreciate you, and avoid making you angry, hopefully. I have a problem with me. <laughs> what? You do? Girl, read between the lines. It's the 21st century, I mean, not for them, but still. I don't like any of them. I look at them and don't feel anything. What are you supposed to feel? Uh, uh, okay. Mm, I'll try to explain. Please, maybe it will make her alarms go off a little. Sarah slowly walked behind Davy and brushed her hair to one side, her movements precise and careful. She was almost pressing against her back, one arm wrapped around her waist. What are you doing? I'm showing you. She smelled of wild blueberries with a hint of violets, the sweetness of her perfume complemented by a powdery note. Sarah pulled Davy closer to her. She leaned over to her ear and whispered, When a person you like touches you like this, you start wanting more. When they do this... Sarah blew on her neck and her hand resting on Davy's waist moved a little higher, pressing into her harder. It should make your knees tremble. Path of passion! Davy felt as if something inside her was responding to Sarah's touch. She laughed awkwardly but didn't move. You're right. Unusual sensation. See, I've never felt anything like that. Something about her words didn't add up and Davy decided to ask. Didn't you say you've been pining for someone? I did. Sarah has taught you something. You experience unusual sensations. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the gay panic. <laughs> I can't. Say gay panic next time, writers. In any case, I'm grateful to you for keeping quiet about Rata. Does anyone else know? No, just the three. Well, five of us. Five? Well, Raj and Kamal too, but they have no reason to talk. Davy nodded. She looked up at the sun. It had almost reached its zenith, and it was about to get very hot. Saraswati hurried back to the hall to join the others, and Davia went to her bedroom to prepare for a ride and escape the midday heat. By the time she got to the stables, her brother had come back. Kairas put his horse back in its stall and looked at his sister. What are you doing here? You're not going horse riding, are you? Where have you been? Kamal and I went to look. To the local village. You stayed there to manage his affairs. Davy, please go back to the residence. Everyone is here. So what? Do you want to gallop around brandishing your dagger in front of the whole dozen? How disgraceful! Let them come down and watch me!
They might like it. I love her. Devia. What? Can you please make me a list of all the things I can do because of someone's mother and their grumbling? Me. I would like to know in advance. I wouldn't want to harm my chances of getting married. Period. Oh, I love this. Uh, me. I wonder where you got that st bird nature from. From the one who raised me. Period. Blame yourself if I'm being too much, sir. Kaira shook his head but couldn't help smiling. If you meet Gamal on your way, please tell him to come see me. Have you been told that the bride will be chosen today? Yes, it's strange that you're so calm. We've been through this many times. Stop it. Her brother left, not letting Davy start the conversation again. She scoffed. Her emotions overwhelmed her again, reminding her why she'd come there in the first place. She let out Deimos, who looked as if he'd missed her a lot during the long week of separation. Beautiful. I know, I know. Don't be angry at me. Having mouthed him, she moved toward the field. Davia had been riding for half an hour when she realized that it wasn't helping her. The whistling of the wind and her ears in the endless green hills weren't calming her down like they usually did. Her hand reached for the dagger. She wanted to try the new longest she'd seen that Sepoys make during their training near the residence. Sepoys are professional infantrymen in British India. Okay. Deimos was still restless, so she just let him graze, but didn't let him out of her sight. There was no one around, so Davy drew out her dagger, got in position, and imagined all the bad things that had happened over the past week, over the past month. Everything that kept her up at night and stopped her from smiling during the day. She swung once, twice, and crouched down, dodging an imaginary enemy. Then she turned around and threw the blade at the nearest pole. It missed, almost hitting Kamal, who managed to crouch down in time. Your emotions are getting in the way. Focus. The man had appeared next to her almost without making a noise. He'd managed to jump off his horse and even tie it up when Davy's blade cut deep into a high stack nearby. Kamal found the dagger and returned it to her. She took it, breathing heavily, and bowed briefly. Good morning, Mr. Rai. What are you wearing? He hooked one finger under the collar of the shirt Davy was wearing. These are my training clothes. You call randomly waving a weapon training. I do. I almost killed you. It's easier to look down on people when you're a warrior. I almost killed you. <laughs> a few inches lower in my dagger would have trimmed your beard. Not bad for an amateur, huh? You didn't even hear me coming. If I wanted Evie, you would be lying on the ground defeated. Evie put her hands on her hips and arced an eyebrow. Since Mr. Rai knows everything about the art of combat, maybe he wants to teach me? Kamal burst out laughing, taking the hardness of his horse. I'm afraid he doesn't. Your brother will have my head if I start teaching you without him knowing about it. Okay, this choice will affect your skill. Oh, then we have to. I won't tell anyone. He will never find out. Kamal crossed his arms over his chest. He gave her a disarming grin. Is Musharma breaking the rules again? Yes. What did Sarah say about the rules? They are meant to be broken. <laughs> Only if she won't be breaking them alone. Ah! Kamal straightened up and put his hands behind his back. Tall, handsome, strong. If such a man taught Davy, she'd soon have no equal. He nodded. Attack me. You're unarmed. He doesn't need any weapon, does he? You have a simple dagger and have 30 years of training. <laughs> Damn. Thirty? Davy rushed to him, but Kamal dodged all her blows. Even more, actually, but I didn't want to embarrass you. Damn! Path of passion. Don't worry, I'm not embarrassed. Kamal's self-confidence only spurred Davy on, prompting her to strike blow after blow. Kamal dodged him easily as if he were dancing. She tried again and again, but she was getting tired and out of breath. Kamal couldn't help but laugh. You're unstoppable. Davy slowed down, breathing heavily. She smiled, brushing the hair from her face. You just egged me on. Do you like being challenged? Yes. The more challenges I get, the more I'm willing to beat them all. He came closer and gently took her by the wrist. Davy was surprised at how fragile they looked in his strong hands. Kamal began to explain. 
at your opponent's body. You need to anticipate the actions because that's what they will be doing with you. What does that mean? I'll show you. He made Davy swing her arm. If I see the dagger in your hand moving toward me, I will dodge in the opposite direction. Trick me, swing the one hand, but hit me elsewhere. Releasing her, Kamal took a step to the right as if dodging. Davia quickly figured out what to do. She struck him from the left? Fuck. Ah, oh, no matter. Davy didn't understand what Kamal wanted from her, so she used her old tactics. She missed, of course. Kamal saw the confusion on her face and hurried to explain. Look, when you start hitting me from the left, I immediately read your body. I then dodge to the right. You have to trick me and hit me from the opposite side so that I don't expect it. So when I hit left, he will dodge right and I have to strike right. I see. Kamal taught you a new trick. Shall we practice? Show me your cat like race and get to me. Alright. David pretended to swing to the right. She wanted to take a step to the side and turn. But at that moment, Kamal tripped her. Davia wasn't expecting that and slammed into him. Come on, let's let's go. Losing her balance, she grabbed the collar of Kamal's Shervani in a last-ditch attempt to stay on her feet. Oh, Kamal instinctively caught Davy so that she wouldn't get hurt. She bumped her forehead lightly against his shoulder, but he held her tightly and didn't let her fall. I've got you. They froze like that. She was clutching his hands and he was holding her by the waist near the ground. She could feel his big strong hand through her clothes. All of a sudden, it was as if she were looking at a stranger. He was kind and gentle with her, treating his best friend's younger sister with respect. But he hadn't noticed that in front of him was no longer the young woman he thought he knew, but a woman who was becoming more beautiful every day. Her gaze wasn't unguarded and naive anymore, but conscious, mature. He realized he didn't really know her, or rather, not that side of her. Have a passion! Did you plan all this? Not really. I didn't think I'd have to catch you. And I didn't think I'd have to fall. You didn't fall. Mm, are you sure about that? You can also say fall in love, you know. Are you sure she didn't fall? So are we done? Kamal realized that they had been frozen like that for several long moments. Get up. He adjusted his grip on Davy's waist and helped her to her feet. Unfortunately, no one saw you. I didn't expect this from you. Really? Tripping someone up is rather dishonest. Even I didn't stoop so low. Don't look for truth or honor in battle. You either win or lose. Yeah. That's something that I've said to a friend once. Because she is very competitive as well. Or she was pretty competitive as well. When you are at war with someone, you can't stick with logic. Because humans play dirty all the time. Just because you play by the rules, because you actually see honor in playing by the rules, does not mean that your opponent will do the same. You can't expect your partner, or let's just say your opponent, to play by the rules. In order to win, they are willing to play dirty. The setting sun bronzed the horizon. Kamal pointed at Deimos. Take your beast to the stables and let's get back. Can I get five more minutes? No, it's getting late. I won't leave you here alone and only you can handle your horse. <laughs> Deimos was standing close to them, grazing by the side of the road. Davia didn't argue. It was useless with Kamal. She did as she was told. They headed back to the mansion. As said as what you promised, half of the heiresses of the Josen gathered in Davy's room. We have an hour to talk and change clothes. But you're wearing the same outfit as this morning. You don't like it. Of course I like it. But then what's the point of all these preparations? Oh, she's not trying to stick out, girl. I can see by her face that she doesn't understand why we even came here. To talk about the upcoming e evening, of course. Amrita took a confident step towards Davy's wardrobe and began rummaging in it. She was choosing an outfit for her friend. And about men? Ah, uh, yes. Rati Banerji smiled, slightly nervous. Although she suffered at the bazoo's hands once, it didn't discourage her from trying to earn their favor. What men? 
the ones you like. You know I don't like anyone. Sara sat Davy on a chair in front of her and began styling her hair. She was great at it, unlike Davy, who always struggled to keep her hair in order. It's better tell us about yourself, Amri. Who do you like? Saraswati, she knows perfectly well who Amrita likes and who Radha likes. Sara was asking such provocative questions on purpose. Amrita sighed dreamily and answered, No one. Lies. Is that so? Isn't your brother already arranging your engagement? He is, but what does it have to do with love? <laughs> Radha didn't take her eyes off her. She knew Amrita had her sights set on Raj, but for some reason Miss Rai didn't say anything. Maybe Kamal told her everything and Amrita decided not to provoke Radha? If so, she's a lot smarter than I gave her credit for. Damn, we're saying our friend is stupid and only driven by emotion. Here, try this. Or this. Or this one. Amrita laid out several outfits in front of Davy. She's like, we're doing a fashion show now. Ooh, that's not mine. I I don't like any of these, y'all. Oh, gosh. Okay. Mm. I don't like any of these. <laughs> so I don't know. Let's go with eyes and fire. We can be both. We can be gentle, but also fire. Stop here. There is not a better outfit, girl. Trust me. Great. Now I'll finish your hair. Mm. Um, let's leave them down. Disappointed with the choices, to be quite honest, but it's okay. Something is missing. Your neck is bare. Amri, check a jewelry box. You did bring jewelry, didn't you? Davy shrugged her shoulders. Aishvarya was supposed to pack some. I found something. Oh god, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going with the gemstones. As soon as she was ready, Davy immediately stopped thinking about how much time it had taken. She looked stunning. In the meantime, the girls were still talking about men. I like handsome and funny ones. Any sadness is much easier to bear if you have someone to laugh with. I agree. When it was Davy's turn, she pretended to be very interested in her palu. Don't try to avoid the question. What question? Sarah added. Just tell us what kind of men you like, and we will decide which one of the members of the dozen gets closest to it. <laughs> Have we seen Sara? She was actually embarrassed. <laughs> mm. Oh, who said I like men? Oh! Queen! <laughs> I'm so sorry, y'all. I love this. I love that we're capable to, like, play. And not just with straight, but also, like, bi version. I, I love this. I love all kinds of love. And I love that even the games are starting to become more open on this. Um, Let's see. Confident and refined. I like smart men with a good sense of humor. Reliable, caring, strong. Hmm. Well, if you guys ask me, I can't really categorize. Because in my eyes, depending on where your head is at, any kind of men can give you the feeling that you are special. In my eyes, depending on where your head is at, you just need someone you feel comfortable with and you can feel comf uh, you can find comfort in someone caring, in someone loving, in someone arrogant that is so arrogant that it's already funny to you or in someone that you can just laugh with, which is a humorful one. So, I can't really categorize but I love a confident man, of course. Like someone that is just self-aware. I don't need to brag, but I'm aware that I am capable of doing a lot of things. I know what my weaknesses are. I know where my strengths lie. And I'm capable to use those the way I like. That, in a certain sense, kind of confidence. But uh, you know what? A smart man with a good sense of humor, you know? Someone who will be interesting to talk to and who will always be able to make me laugh. Yeah, you know, I also like those deep conversations. You don't necessarily just need 
to have those or you don't necessarily only have to have those deep conversations with your friend or your best friend. You can also have those conversations with your boyfriend. Someone who reads a lot and is a bit of an introvert and can answer any of my questions. What a strange description. It is what it is. That's how I imagine him. So that's what he will be like. But why would you ask him questions? I don't know. I'm curious. And if he's smart and wise, he'll be able to tell me many interesting things. Sarah leaned over to Rada and whispered. I've heard that there are some girls who get excited by the masculine intellect. <laughs> the masculine what? A man like this could be rare, but there must be one in your circle. Narati turned around and looked at the clock. I think it's time to go or we're going to be late. Will Rita Shiva join us? No, he stayed in Calcutta. In case the local authorities start looking for us, it may seem suspicious to them if they realize that the heads of all the families have left. But we were careful. We left on different days and traveled by different routes. And yet he will keep order there while around Dubai they'll start here. Is it true about his eye? Does he cover it because he's a seer? Yes, and the thing is, these can be so terrifying that it's easier for him to wear an eye patch. Ram uses his eye only when he needs to see something. Otherwise, he would have gone mad a long time ago. The twins know him very well. No wonder they grew up together. Enough about Ram's eye. Let's hurry. I want to know about Ram. As they were walking down the hallway toward the reception room, Amrita caught Davy's hand. Oh? Kamal said he's going to agree. She was whispering in her ear. The other girls paid no attention to them. Who? Agree to what? Yeah. Ra no! No. They actually did it like this. Oh, I'm not okay with this. Technically, Kamal threatened Raj to agree to marry someone he doesn't like just so that she would be happy. No. Oh, I can't stand Kamal. No. If this is true, then I can't stand Kamal. No more romantic options with Kamal. Because this is not okay. This is my motto, ladies and gentlemen. I don't do to someone else what I wouldn't someone to do to me. There is no way that I'm threatening someone into doing something that I want. Uh, besides, what kind of marriage would that be like? You can feel when someone is truly in love with you and truly enjoys spending time with you and doing things with you. And when someone is forced because you can actually see that they are not enjoying themselves. What kind of marriage would that be? Personally, in my eyes, I don't want to be with someone that doesn't truly love me. That doesn't truly appreciate me, nor what I can bring to the table. You know, why would I want such a life? So Kamal actually threatened Raj so that he would get married to Amrita so that she would be happy because she's in love with this man and he can be miserable. I don't think that's okay. Raj, she agreed to marry me. Maybe you should wait a few years. I don't see what's the rush. Devi was 18 years old. But Amrita was slightly younger than her and in some aspects more naive. She just scoffed. Yeah, no wonder that she's such a Karen. Don't be in a hurry to marry and become a mother. I'm not in a hurry. All the boys have stay engaged for a long time and get married later. But it's better to agree to that early or he'll find someone else. He already found someone else. Mahakali forbid I ever run after someone like this. Me! No way in hell! Like, to be quite honest, this kind of love is sad and desperate. Why is this kind of love sad? Because I don't really care that much about me anymore. All of my focus, all of my thoughts are focused on this man. There is nothing I can do personally to avoid all the thoughts of me wanting to have a life with them, a future with them, that it actually becomes a delusion, like a fantasy of mine. I imagine my life to be so beautiful with someone that I have sexual fantasies about, that I'm actually losing myself in that fantasy, in that delusion. Because the person that I have in my mind can be completely different than the real person. 
than the real human being. So if I actually go for it and try to win that person over and that person is like yeah i don't like you like that i will try to question myself my capabilities because my focus is on him like there is no one else i want so if that person doesn't like me i'm like what am i even good at anyways that person doesn't like me either like you are selling yourself short And you're putting yourself in a box when the person that you desire does not want you. And that's a dangerous kind of love. Because that's one of the times where you can actually lose self-love. You sell yourself short because the person that you wanted at that time didn't appreciate you enough to like you back. That person didn't like you back. And they told you and you're like, oh, what am I good at anyways? Like that person didn't like me and maybe it's something wrong with me. Maybe if I would have been less confident or maybe if I wouldn't have been so sensitive, maybe he would have given me a chance or something. No. Why didn't you confess to the girls that you like him? They would have laughed at me. I see. They continued on their way chatting about nothing in particular. I would be done with the conversation the second it started. Because I'm so disappointed in Kamal. How can he force him? The mountain residence, spacious and luxurious reception room was filled with people. The sound of incense and tart wine and the hum of conversations filled the room. Waiting for the meeting to start, the families were chatting and sharing their opinions on the matter. Davy noticed that there was a man standing next to Kairas. Diminish noticeably. I don't like this state of affairs. Who are you, sir? Devia touched Radha's arm to ask who that man was. As the future Basulianess, she knew everyone. That's Mohan Prasad, that of his family. Prasad? They're an important family. Why don't I know him? He travels a lot, trading with China and England. The Vaishis. Trading? Aren't the Prasad herbalists? They're all doctors, aren't they? The Prasads were the sixth most important family in the Dos, and immediately after the Takus, the color was green and their symbol was the sloth bear. All the men in their family were doctors, and it was thanks to them that Kakuta was never left without a health care system, even in the worst of times. Yes, trading. Mother said he sells medicines. Rada put her hand on Davy's shoulder and said, I need to go. My mother is probably looking for me. Good luck and don't worry about anything, little bad. Sarah winked at her and followed her sister, Davy, and Amrita stood next to the, their brothers. Rati Banerjee couldn't stand with them. There was a division in the dozen, and in all families following the first seven were considered inferior in status. They had failed to marry into one of the leading families in the past and lost their influence as a result. They were expected to keep a respectful distance. The Banerjis were the eighth family and Drati had to stand near them. Vidya, Bazu and Raish Dubai stood in the center of the room. Next to them were the younger hares, Ram, Radha and Saraswati. Ram was waiting for the meeting to begin with a bored look on his face. He arced an eyebrow when he, look, when he noticed Davy looking at him. What? Why are you mad again? Roll your eyes. Me too. <laughs> Davia tried her best to show him how much she disliked his arrogantly raised eyebrow. <laughs> Me too, sis. To her indignation, Ram just rolled his eyes too. <laughs> Love it. This is fate. I can't. I'm telling you, this is fate. <laughs> I have the feeling I need to go with Ram. <laughs> he laughed in the small side. <laughs> This man, this man is mine. This man is mine. He laughed a small silent laugh and then no longer looking at Davy turned to his brother. Ram is teasing you? Me too, sir. The meeting was declared open. Vidya briefly explained the situation to everyone present. She told them about the new governor general of Bengal and who was unmarried and descended from the ancient Declare lineage. They had held the power over the British county of Hertfordshire for many years. If he married one of the local women, the members of the Dozen would have had access to higher political positions. The plan was to infiltrate the government institutions one by one, wrapping around them like a giant snake and then destroy the entire system in one single motion. Damn, 
and crush all those who interfered with them and who were bringing pain and suffering to their country. The dozen would drive the foreigners away, and those who stayed would be killed or sacrificed to the goddess Kali. Damn! Despite the fact that Vidya's plan was mostly met with enthusiasm, there were those who opposed it. This will put all of us in danger. Wasn't the last uprising enough for you? Back then, the British killed all the heads of our families in retaliation, like cattle sent to the slaughter, and all the young heirs lost their parents. How many inexperienced brats had to take over their family's affairs instead of their father's? Mohan's speech started a heated discussion. Some agreed with him, while others were the very brats who were forced to take responsibility for their family. Not everyone was killed. And you know it. Oh yes, Miss Basu. You survived by some miracle. Aren't you afraid? She smirked. Me? Afraid of those bastards. These usurpers. And did you have those bastards to thank for not being burnt alive? <laughs> Vidya is one of the few women who refused to undergo the sati ritual and burn alongside her dead husband. Sati is a ritual during which a wife immolates herself on the funeral pipe of her dead husband. Damn. I doubt that there is anyone in the world who could force her to do something she doesn't want to do. You can burn whoever you want, but no match will be lit near me. Damn. But in customary... I couldn't care less about these customs. I was not going to die because some bastards killed my husband. <laughs> oh, oh, sh oh, love her. I remember that. I, fo I forgot her name, but she was taken in by the family we were living with in Kali Call of Darkness. They were married for 10 seconds and then the husband died and everyone was like, yeah, if the husband dies, then it's always the fault of the wife and she needs to burn alive. Bro. My sins had nothing to do with it. Ram interfered. With all the respect, Vidya, you're alive because those same bastards burned the ritual and would have definitely found out about your death. That's why it's time to free ourselves from them. They're watching our every move. Some people disagreed. The discussion continued. Oh my god. It was already dark outside when they got to the most important part. What about our girls? Will one of them fall into the hands of the enemy? And what about the purity of our bloodline? We only need one person. There are several names on the list drafted by the governor. One of these noble heiresses will become his bride. What are the criteria? How will be the bride be chosen? It should be a young woman from the Dozen family who have medium influence. Heirs from the top families are too important and the lesser families aren't noble enough. That the choice is between a Prasatix or Banerjee woman. Davy heaved a deep sigh of relief. At least she was going to sleep a bit better from then on. But who in their right mind would agree to that? Vidya looked thoughtfully around the crowd. Everyone averted their eyes as if they were back at school avoiding the case of a teacher. Manish, where's your husband? Managing the affairs at home, Miss Basu. I see. Remember when I said that the day would come when you'd pay me back your debt? Um, what is going on? Miss Basu, how old is your daughter? Davy turned around to see who she was talking about. It was Manish Manerji. And her daughter? Oh! Amrita said that the Bazoos funded their printing houses. Manish can't refuse. This is... To be honest, you can't force someone like this. And especially if it's about the daughter. Like, come on, as a mother, you have to give up your daughter because of a death that you had to do in order to survive. What kind of... Nah. This is heartless. Taking advantage of their hopeless situation to force them to give their only daughter to her enemy. That. They're right about Vidya. She doesn't love anyone except her daughters. Passion. I'm a passion then. Manish's eyes filled with tears. She couldn't refuse, but her heart was clearly breaking at the thought that Rati would have to marry the British lord. To everyone's surprise, Rati consoled her mother. Don't cry. This will help us. She turned to Vidya. The tenderness gone from her voice. This will help us, won't it, Miss Pazu? Vidya smiled, understanding what she was trying to say. It will help you greatly. The Banerjee residence is in a story state, isn't it? 
It's time to build a new one. The room began to buzz again. The bride seemed to have been chosen. Rash turned to his younger brother. What do you think, Ram? What does Mahakali say? Ram Dubai slowly removed his eye patch, looking at Rati Banerjee. <laughs> yeah, his head. He shook his head and covered his eye again. He leaned over to his brother and whispered something in his ear. Rash didn't look surprised, but seemed to be thinking hard about something. What's the matter? Ooh. Oh my head! <laughs> me! It's me! <laughs> I'm gonna have to be the one here. Rati Banerjee would be a great candidate. Does anyone have anything else to say? The crowd roared. It was hard to tell whether they were happy that their daughters were spared or scared of the coming chances. The discussion kept going, but Davy soon got distracted. She was feeling sick. She didn't even remember the rest of the evening. I would have wanted to just, like, leave. Two hours of restless sleep didn't help. Her head was throbbing as if it was being crushed in a steel vise. Damn! Davy tossed and turned her in bed, trying to go back to sleep, but in vain. In the end, she got up, put on a robe, and trucked to make some tea. Again. She had almost reached the kitchen when she saw a man through the window. Someone was sitting in the courtyard of the residence, in the exact spot where she'd played dice with the Pazoo twins. She took a closer look. It can't be. What? What's happening? Ram Dubai was there clutching at his head. He looked as if he just got out of bed. Him too. Like I said, we're connected. <laughs> Uh, Davy went down into the courtyard looking at him in surprise. He's my soulmate in this game. What are you doing here looking like this? Damn! Can you be even more rude? He turned at the sound of her voice. He looked pointedly at her rope, then asked calmly. What about you? I was going to the kitchen. I've been feeling sick since the meeting. I saw your brother leading you away. How did it end? Did they choose Rati Banerjee then? Uh, she will become the Lord's bride. I should be happy. You are so worried. There is nothing to be happy about. Her life is over. Oh, Miss Sharma, you are so thoughtful. Does your heart break for everyone? I'm sorry for not being completely obsessed with the goddess like you are. To be quite honest, I'm gonna have to put it here like this. I don't mean to offend anyone by saying this, but there are people that are extremely into serving their goddess and they think that the religion is the most important thing and there are people like me i don't have religion i believe that there is god and that he created the universe and earth and i believe that there is a devil but i'm not part of any religion so me reading that i can't imagine being someone like this like completely believing what I see in the Bible and completely going with what the goddess is telling me. I feel like that would make me kind of a robot. If I'm part of a religion and every single religion has a Bible and they have specific rules in it, all the people that are part of that religion abide by the same rules, by the same things that are written in their Bible. So it's like kind of having robots there because they all try to go by the same things as in by the rules of the Bible. I am not someone like this. Like I want to decide things by myself. I don't want to abide by rules that are written in the Bible. Maybe I'm seeing it differently. You can all tell me how you feel about this. But I am not a strong believer like they are in this game here. And apparently yours doesn't for anyone. Period. Why bother when the goddess herself allows you to decide people's fate, am I right? Period. Ram got to his feet and moved slowly toward Davy. What you want? As the moon eliminated his tall slender silhouette, he looked almost menacing. Try me, bitch. Try me. I always love when people are like trying to intimidate you. Because that's the only way they can think of winning the debate. When people are out of options, they don't know how to win the battle anymore. Whether it's a silent conversation or an open discussion. They try the 
intimidation. They try to intimidate you in a menacing way and depending on how strong you are on the inside or how good someone is at intimidation and at threatening you, you will back down from the conversation, from the confrontation, and they will have won. You can try, Ram Dubai. You can try. It was unusual to see him without his eye patch, but it was even more unusual to look straight into his different colored eyes. What? Devi, why do you think you were giving your beautiful head? To use it, maybe? Ram stood in front of her because of their height difference. He had to lean a little closer in order to whisper. It will save the Banerjis from poverty. The Lord is a gift to their family, even though they say otherwise. How do you know that? This is the smallest sacrifice possible. People are ready to die for the freedom. That this is just a marriage. The Banerjee family is on the brink of ruin. They will reward them generously and won't let them humiliate themselves. It's just a transaction. Don't be naive. Oh, I'm not naive. I just don't think it's fair to force someone, no matter what their situation right now is. There are people that are dying out there because they don't have much. You call this a transaction, but it's still not you sacrificing your freedom and your life to be in the hands of someone that you barely know and someone you're scared of. Let's just call it like this. The entire dozen, even though they don't want to admit it, they are petrified. They are completely intimidated by the governor. That's why they're like trying to have this political marriage. Davia noticed that his eyes were bloodshot. Ram looked tired, exhausted, even in a terrible mood. He suddenly blinked nervously, catching at his eye. Oh god. He winced as if in pain. Davy reached for his face, checked if he was a- I'm gonna reach for your face. Come over here. With one quick soft motion, she put her fingers to his cheek, checking if he had a fever. It seems fine. Ram jerked his head back, shaking off her hand. I didn't allow you to do that, and I didn't ask. You decided that it was completely fine to come closer to me and try to intimidate me. I decided it was okay to check on you. Like, of course, like I said, and it will always be like this. Consent. Yes. But. We didn't kiss him or anything. We just put our fingers on his cheek trying to check if he had a fever. Sir, you don't need to be that dramatic. And I didn't allow you to come so close to me. Like I said, period. You're the one who came here. What are you doing here? Are you sick? A verdict. Fresh always helps. He turned away, running his fingers through his dark, long hair. He remained obstinately silent, although it was obvious that he was feeling unwell. Where do these headaches come from? You won't understand even if I try to explain. Ram froze, staring into space. He frowned thoughtfully, massaging his temples. He looked at Davy again and then held out his hand. And give it to me. My hand? Are you carrying around someone else's hand? You could give me... <laughs> that was funny <laughs> that was funny here it is oop out of passion she slapped his hand hard before holding it damn me too Ram was startled by the blow he gave Davy a puzzled look and asked why did you do that you got what you asked for next time ask nicely oh what do you even need my hand for this is interesting my head feels much better Ooh. huh he looked thoughtfully somewhere to the side. He lowered his eyelids, listening to himself. As long, delicate fingers squeezed her hand gently. They felt warm in the chilly mountain air. Davy focused on her feelings. Maybe she was imagining it, but her pain had also lessened. Her head felt clearer. Ram grinned and shook his head as if he couldn't believe it. He let go of her hand. I don't understand. My headache is also better. This is strange. Ram sighed wearily, but a smile tucked at his lips. As if everything could be simple. Something is happening between you, and we're not just talking about physical attraction. He grimaced at another pang of pain. Maybe you'd like some tea? Or a medicine? I just need to get back to the Kaligat. I'll be over soon. The Kaligat? That's where Geta the Devadasi is ready to help you, right? My private Krotos order. Keta knows how to brew an herbal decoction and read the tantra that helps elevate my pain. 
He squeezed his eyes shut again. His breathing became racked. Ram turned around several times, looking in both directions. He looked frantic, as if he was suddenly overcome by fear. No, it's not just pain. Davy, we have to go. What's the matter? Ram was clearly panicked, and his fingers were shaking slightly. All right, then. Let's help him and let's leave. Something's wrong. Something's coming. I can hear and feel it. There's a stranger here. He grabbed Davy by her shoulders just as they heard a window shatter and people screaming. There was a bright flash. Ram dragged Davy after him. They ran inside to avoid getting hit by the falling shards of glass. What is going on here? <gasps> Someone lit the entire place on fire! They said political marriage, my ass! As they ran into the hall, they saw it engulfed by flames. A fire! This is just a fire. This is arson. Her heart was pounding. Her ears could no longer hear anything. Fear washed over Davy, but it spurred her to sorrowless assess the situation. If it's arson, does it mean there are enemies in the mansion? Yes. Then I need to go to my room. Ram grabbed her hand and screamed. Don't be stupid. Only this part of the building is burning. I've got time. I need to get dressed. I can't run outside like this. Of course you can. You were with him. And if it's... They both turned toward the corridor when they heard the terrified screams of those trying to escape from the burning residence. And then her fingers trembled as gunshots rang out. She looked at Ram helplessly, her eyes filled with horror. He spontaneously put his hand on her head and they both crouched down. Oh, Ram, this is something that I had to learn, y'all. I hope it will never happen, y'all. <laughs> I don't wish bad luck on anyone, but if something terrible should happen around you, or if you should just feel insanely in pain, and the person that is around you is willing to protect you like Ram is doing right now, then that means that they truly care. Something terrible was going on, something she'd read about and heard from the older generations, but never seen with her own eyes, so she didn't know what to do. We're being attacked, but we're going to get out of here. Don't worry. I have to go to my room, don't be stupid. Just what exactly is in there? A damn Asura? My weapon, my weapon is in my room. Ram hesitated for a moment, thinking he wanted to grab her and drag her out by force. I knew he was about to do that. Because he's like, what is so damn important? Come here already. Like, this is something I would have done, to be quite honest. Like, if it's about survival, I don't care about someone's limitation. Where they're like, I don't care. You can hate me later if you think that I touched you the wrong way. Or if you didn't want me to help you either. You can hate me later, but I'm gonna save your life real quick. He wanted to grab her and drag her out by force. They needed to get out of there. But she didn't want to and he couldn't leave his only brother behind. Fine. Ram took Davy by her arm and they headed toward the bedrooms with long, quick strides. He said as they walked. You change and I'll go fight my brother. What about the people shooting, Ram? What if they break into my room? Don't leave me alone. <laughs> Do you want me to stay with you as if I'm your god? She clung to his arm. <laughs> She's like, please stay with me. <laughs> Trying to keep up with him. He was taller and faster and she almost had to run. Give me just a minute to get dressed and we'll go get everyone else together. As if you can get dressed in a minute. Do not test me. Just for that, I would be ready in a minute. No, I have my riding clothes. I'll be quick. They had almost reached the right turn when they heard heavy footsteps coming from the other end of the corridor. And voices talking in English. Cover your mouth with your hand, bitch. You do not scream. This is like an alarm. Hello, I'm right here. Shoot me. Davy pressed her hand to her lips to stifle a startled gasp. Without thinking twice, Ram pushed her behind him and froze. Be quiet. I am. Two men were walking toward them. They were wearing strange uniforms. They were neither British nor Indian. As soon as they saw Davy and Ram, they pointed their weapons at them. <gasps> Who are you? Shoot the guy, but leave the girl alive. Ooh. <laughs> He's hot. <laughs> He's good looking. Sorry. Can we really just shoot him? We can. I'm sure. 
Right, try him. He's a Dubai. Davy felt Ram's skin getting hotter. He stared at the man and stretched out his hand. Bye bye, bitch. You do not know who you're messing with. This man is. <laughs> I was about to say, this man is. <laughs> he has been summoned by the gods. <laughs> try him. You will pay for this. Ramsa is lit up and he squeezes his fingers as if he were holding someone by the throat. Despite the fire, the air around them grew colder. Davy saw terrifying disordered shadows creeping out of the walls. Yes, use the shadows. They were howling, groaning, and moving their claws. They were lost souls, cursed for their earthly sins. Seeing them, the first man screamed and recoiled. The other one froze in horror, not even blinking. Yes, that's what you did, bitches. You know, I always think it's so hilarious when they all think that they have the biggest balls of them all. And then you, as the lesser evil or the weaker link, let's just call it like this. Show them what you're made of and that they're the ones and that they are the weaklings. And they are like, please, please don't hurt me. I am sorry. When they notice that they are screwed. But before, they didn't have mercy for you. It's always so hilarious. What? How? Yes, take him with you. The shadows wrapped around the man and squeezed him, gnawing at his flesh and tearing him apart. <laughs> I'm so sorry, y'all. The other man began to tremble speechless and ran away. Help. No. The man's strength faded away, his eyes rolled back, and his body started writhing in his last moments of agony. Bye-bye, bitch. But Ram didn't want Davy to see any more of that. This man is so cute! He was like, bye-bye, bitches. But as soon as he noticed that we're there, he's like, okay, I have to stop. Like, she does not need to see this. He grabbed her arm again and dragged her toward the bedrooms. Quick, go take what you need. You have a minute. You killed him? Yes. <laughs> Ram is my soulmate, y'all. This is not even a question no more. What's going on? Where's the fire coming from? And those people... Girl, you have one minute! I still reached Davy's bedroom, he said. Later. Now that... Ram opened the door and pushed her... Me! This man is me! This man is my soulmate, y'all! This man is my soulmate! Like, later! There is still fire! Just get dressed. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> like, sometimes... He didn't close the door, but turned away to keep an eye on the hallway. With shaking hands, Davia quickly took off her clothes. Too scared to feel embarrassed, she changed into her riding clothes and hastily tied her hair. Before going back to Ram, she rushed to look from the balcony. Part of the estate was in flames. They were licking the stone walls, filling the night sky with a red glow. Shots rang out once in a while, which could only mean that not many of their enemies were armed. Davy could see people fleeing in terror from the residence. Are you done? Davy, are you seriously looking out the window? <laughs> this woman is inappropriate, sir. I'm so sorry. This woman cannot take the hint. Girl, the building is on fire. Get what you need and let's run. Ram saw her, but she was already running as fast as she could toward him. Better. Better for you. When they were together again, he led her to the other end of the corridor. Where are we going? What about the others? I've changed my mind. I'll take you outside first and then come back. No, you can't do that. He's gonna save me and then he's gonna burn the flames. Nice. Oh, she'll only get in the way. Bitch, I don't have to help you, you know. But won't you stay with me? No. That. Girl, if you're safe, he's not gonna stay with you. No, I need to look for my brother as soon as I take you out of here. He wanted to protest. She wanted to protest, but Ram kept rushing her, not letting her slow down. The courtyard was in chaos. Everyone there looked terrified and desperate. Men and women were trying to escape. Some were dressed. Some were wearing only their nightgowns, and others were holding some belongings in their hands. Kamal was standing in the center of the chaos. He was helping people by not letting them get disoriented, crash into each other, or fall to the ground. Amrita, who had managed to get dressed, was clinging to him. Quick, quick, Davy, you're still here. I thought Kairos. Never mind. Come here. He pulled her close, and checked if she was injured. He noticed a young Dubai standing nearby. I'm going back to look for Ai. 
Help Miss Bazoo with the twins, if you can. I'll take the girls away. Ram nodded curtly and ran back to the mansion, Davy watched in horror as he chose to dive back into that crazy inferno. <laughs> Not inferno! She was shaken out of her thoughts by Kamal grabbing her and Amrita. He led them away. Don't slow down. They're inside. They have guns. A filthy low death. Davy, I saw them. I'm a Prasad. Shot right on the spot. In the back. Amrita was stuttering, choking on her tears in panic. Okay, I feel bad for her. Demasuras. <laughs> Let them burn down with the house. Ooh. What if they were waiting for us down the road? You know what? Let them burn down with the house. <laughs> I mean, someone that is willing to destroy someone's property. Someone that is willing to let someone burn. They deserve the same fate. In my eyes, same goes with same. If you are willing to burn someone down to the ground, not caring what that could actually do to someone mentally, then you deserve the same punishment. <laughs> All of them. I don't feel sorry for any of them. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. First, let's try not to burn with them. Some were shot while others soaked their daggers in the foreigners' blood. We need to go to the stables. It might be safer there. Hurry. Look at this. I'm sorry, how did they even know where this residence is? The entire residence was soon engulfed in flames. The screams of people dying or fleeing merged into a single chorus of pain and fear. It was despicable and inhumane attempt to deal with the dozen all at once. Davy turned back and saw Kairas running toward her. She felt immense joy and relief at the same time. I mean, our brother is here. Apparently, we only have our brother. But her heart sank when she saw him clutching at his side, his fingers covered in blood. He was hurt. Devi, Kamal. Kai. Oh. She ran to him to throw herself into his arms, but suddenly stopped, unshed tears frozen on her eyelashes. Are you hurt? Everything is fine. Kamal, my brother, thank you. Kairas looked gratefully at his friend. He'd saved his younger sister's life. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ram saved us. Amrita clung to Kamal's arm and started to cry out of helplessness. Girl! I mean, I get where she's coming from, but actually I would be so immersed in what was happening that I wouldn't even have the strength to cry. I would literally be completely emotionless in a certain sense. I would be so overwhelmed with what was happening that I wouldn't even have the thought about crying. Who was attacking them? Where could they go? What to do next? A wave of merciless questions made Davy feel desperate. Kairas leaned on Kamal, wincing in pain. More shots were heard. They got in. Through the first floor, they set the fire to everything. They saw and shot everyone who got in the way. Filthy dogs. So it was the British? <laughs> who are they? Who sent them? Someone let them here. Ah, a traitor. Beautiful. <coughs> Mohan said there was a fight at the stables. Davy noticed that some of the people had gathered there to mount their horses. She was paralyzed with fear at the thought of Deimos. What had happened to the horses? Were they alive? Could those bastards have slaughtered the animals so that no one could escape? What if the fire got there? I'm going to the stables. Davy was about to take off running, but Kara stopped her with a death grip. He is like, you don't even dare to run away. No, not yet. We won't run with the crowd until we know for sure it's safe there. We have to wait for Vidi and Ram. Ram was rushing toward them with Radha and Saraswati. They were running holding the hems of their saris and he was right on their heels. Yeah, gunshots rang out behind their backs, bitches. <laughs> Let them burn down with the I'm so sorry, y'all. Like, I have no mercy for someone that is willing to hurt somebody else just for more power or money. I have no sympathy for people like that. If you are willing to hurt and kill someone out of pure greed, you deserve the same punishment. I'm just saying. If you're willing to burn someone's house down or burn a person, then you deserve to burn. <laughs> Kamal rushed to help them and soon everyone was reunited. What is video? Who was supposed to follow right after us? Rush, quick! 
I was about to say Vidya is gonna die. She is way too iconic to die. She literally said I'm not dying next to my husband just because a bitch was willing to kill him. I'm surviving. Miss Bazoo emerged from the mansion but stopped to call out and wait for Raj. I mean, he's the hair. She's exposed. Does she deserve that we save her though? Ah, oh, come on. Get her out of there. Davia jerked her hand free and rushed to Vidya. Devi, Devi, no. Yes. Davy, yes. She managed to reach the woman and grab her hand so that she wouldn't stand in the middle of the road, an easy target for a bullet. Kamal wasn't going to just stand there and watch, so he rushed to help too. Path of passion. Davia yanked Mrs. Bazoo's arm hard almost angrily and dragged her to the others. We feel no passion right now. <laughs> no time for sympathy. No time to make sure that we are behaving as we should with respect. No, we don't care. Be angry with us after we saved your ass. You can't just stand there. Raj is still inside. He must get out. And he will. There's nothing you can do to help him. A bullet whistled right past Vidya. <laughs> The woman screamed as she found herself in Kamal's strong arms. He scooped up Mrs. Bazoo and Davy and hurriedly dragged them both away. A man with a gun was running toward them. Try me! Try me! Come on. At this point, I literally would be like running after them. I would like get a shield or something and I would go in for the kill because, bitch, get away from here, quick. Kamal turned around to kill the attacker and Davia ran with Vidya to rejoin everyone else. Ram was coming toward them. Vidya looked at Davy, her eyes full of fear and helplessness. Okay, so from the way she's behaving right now, I think she underestimated the danger. She underestimated the danger. She thought it would be easy to, like, get an arranged marriage with technically the British government as their biggest enemy right now. So she underestimated the danger by trying to get in contact with the British government and trying to, like, merge them. She thought it would be easy to, like, get an arranged marriage done between the Dozen and the British government. And after some time, the member of the Dozen that got married to the heir of the British government could be capable to destroy the British government from within. She actually thought it would be easy. And if I can be honest, Vidya always looked completely heartless to me, completely cold-blooded. She did not seem to care besides the fact that she tried to teach her daughters to always stay in line, etc. She always seemed kind of cold-blooded. She did not care. If everything she wanted was going according to plan, she was always being bitchy, as in too much. She was not really taking anyone's feelings into consideration but her own. And that's not good. So the fact that she literally just saw the real danger that's awaiting her by trying to fulfill her commission and her plan of destroying the British government, she realized what she was going up against. And the fact that she's looking at someone beneath her, let's just say it like this, full of fear and helplessness, that actually means that deep down she's actually a very vulnerable person. She's just trying to mask it because it's not like she has a choice. She's the head right now of the Bazoo family and the Bazoo is the leader of that family. And if you can't have a cool head in dire situations, that can get you killed. And we learned that in Kali Call of Darkness. So the fact that she's behaving like this may seem a little extreme for me. But maybe she has a hidden agenda that we are not seeing. And we just immediately assume that she does not care about anyone but herself. But let's see. You saved me. Saved me. She does not want to die either, no. Vidya Bazoo won't forget this. Dignity! Davy was right. A few moments later, Rash ran out of the residence. He reached them just as Kamal was sliding open the attacker's stomach. Deserved. <laughs> like I said, no sympathy. You rakashas. Ooh! Oh, the hottie! <laughs> I'm so sorry. Nana burn. He deserves to burn, Kamal. Why didn't you push him into the flames? Rakashas are evil spirits and man-eating demons in Hinduism. Ah, the ones that Ram is capable to call upon. 
Okay, <laughs> Rush. The two of them returned to the others. When everyone found themselves together and the crowd dispersed a little, they decided to head toward the stables. The destructive flames burned fiercely and greedily, their power growing by the minute. The hard night was not over yet. Oh no, it wasn't. I see Rati. <laughs> Sorry. Rati Ban. <laughs> Sorry. Rati Banerji was trying to catch up with them, screaming. She was running for her life. We have to help her. I'll get the horses. We need to leave the place as soon as possible. Rash, Amrita and the twins rushed to the stables to get the horses. Kamal went with them to protect them in case of another attack. Ram, Vidi and Devi remained hidden, waiting for Kairas to bring Rati. Hurry up, grab her. Kai, please be careful. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Sorry. <gasps> Kairas had almost reached it. I literally saw the blood on her forehead before the text came. Shit. Kairas had almost reached the young Banerji when her body suddenly shuddered, struck by a bullet. There was a hole in her forehead and blood was screaming down her face was streaming down her face. Two more shots rang out. All of them missed Kairas, but they were so close. Panic gripped Davy's heart. She opened her mouth to call out to him to tell him to turn back. Another shot rang out. <gasps> he did! Kairas shuddered just like Rati did. He did! And he felt that next to her, all coherent thought left Davy's mind. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> They literally killed our brother. Why? This is the same kind of horrible sensation that I felt when I saw that Isman was dead. I was laughing hysterically, like nervously, because I didn't know how to cope with the pain. Why? Why are they doing this? She started crying hysterically and tried to run to get to him. Vidya's strong hands grabbed her and tightly held her back. She dragged Davy away from the road, just like we did with her a few moments ago. <laughs> Davy, I could no longer hear anything. She was screaming in pain, but Vidya wouldn't let her go. Just like what we did, yeah? Ram helplessly looked at the mansion engulfed in flames. He took off his eye patch to use his real vision. Oh, God. Only he knew how many people had died that night. Uh -huh, uh -huh. How many restless souls now inhabited that doomed mansion, a place of slaughter, a place where the air would forever carry the stench of death. The gods themselves had cursed that land. That here, this fate was inevitable. I do not accept this. The world collapsed around them, collapsed along with the smoldering wreckage of a once majestic residence. Davy was hoarse from screaming. She saw the horse Kamal and the others had brought, and with one movement, she shoved Vidya Bazoo away from her. She rushed to Deimos. She wanted to mount him before anyone stopped her. Mount him, and then what? What was she going to do next? Her mind was empty. She felt disoriented. David was hysterical, blinded by pain. The death of her brother made it impossible for her to think. She could only obey her instincts, her panic. A couple of shots ringing nearby frightened the horses, and everyone scattered. Several men could be seen running toward them. Right, take cover. Kamal gripped his blade tighter, ready to plunge deep into his enemy's flesh. Oh, that would actually explain why we are like, oh, we don't give a fuck. Now we are in for the kill. That would explain why we are then the one. Because Rati was the one that was supposed to m get married to the British government. Now that all those bitches killed our brother, it would only make sense that we are like, oh, we are not leaving anyone else to satisfaction. We are going in for the kill. Chaos and panic were all around them. Beside herself with grief and fear, Davy had almost got to Deimos when one of the attackers came running toward her. She recognized him. It was him. He was the one who killed Kairas. Oh, let's kill him. Let's kill him. You! Oh, yes, let's kill him. We don't even have to think about this. No, let's kill him. Without a second thought, Davy drew her dagger and swung with her left hand. The man tried to dodge, but Davy clawed at his face with her right hand, scratching his skin and eyes with her nails. <laughs> he screamed and pushed her away, knocking her to the ground and then ran away. You didn't get hurt thanks to Kamal's training. 
He took my last remaining family from me. Let's kill him. After that, everything was a blur. Davy mounted her horse to catch up with the man. She's birthday was picking up speed, period. You are not getting out of this alive. No, I want to see the face. I want to see the face. He was remarkably obedient, as if he was also driven by a burning desire for revenge. Kamal missed her at the very last moment, not having enough time to catch her. Madness. It was pure madness. Davy, stop. No, shut up. <laughs> I feel no regret. <laughs> this is just this. <laughs> I feel no regret. <laughs> but she couldn't stop. Let's jump him. Oh, ha, ha. This is... Like the vision we saw. That was the first scene of the story. Madness. Oh, wow. <laughs> the blood moon is a terrible omen. The voices and the flames. The pounding of your heart. The night wind in your hair. And a violent flash of pain. Davia hit the damp, cold ground with her whole body. She bumped her head so hard she saw stars. She seemed to have lost her sight and hearing all at once. And her fingers felt so cold. There was only silence. Ram is so handsome, I can't. Yes. Silence. Someone's hands touched her and her headache faded away. Davy sank into oblivion. <laughs> of course, why not, ladies and gentlemen? Why not? Our brother gets killed and now we're all alone. Rage. This is the kind of rage that can actually drive you to do something impulsive and unpredictable. And to be quite honest, I am 100% for it. There was no reason for him to die. They were just saying, okay, we're killing you. Why not? Just because they're part of the dose and in general, I don't understand. This is like this oppressive nature that I can't stand. I hope that we get justice in the next chapters because there was no reason for Kairas to die. There were so many people there. And not only Kairas was killed, but also... Rati, the one that was supposed to marry him. So, like I said, it would only make sense that we are like, yeah, no. One of the British killed my brother. I'm going in for the kill. I'm gonna be the one to cause their destruction. Because it kind of seems like Davy is the kind of person to do that. So, let's see what happens next episode. I hope you enjoyed this. Tell me in the comments below what you think was best. And I will see you in another video. Bye.